Hi everyone, hello. Welcome back to another Pasolivo cooking cuisine. Uh, this time we are going to be featuring uh, Chef Sebastian Becerra. I am super excited to have him. He has traveled all over the US cooking and I am thrilled that we are going to be able to watch his passion at work today. So um, we're gonna give him a little bit of time to hop on. Uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows as usual, we are open to do tastings in both locations. We would love to see you. The weather's fantastic right now. Um, the smoke isn't getting us too much, so that's good. And um, we're doing outside tastings and we are here for you. Uh, the downtown Paso store and the, um, the, the ranch where all the magic happens. So we would love to have you there uh, to come do some tasting and also pick up one of the bundles. As you've been watching, you know that these bundles not only work for one recipe, one cocktail, one everything, it also spans out. So for example, Chef Sebastian today is using the lemon olive oil, the Tuscan olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, the Cucina extra virgin olive oil, the kosher flake sea salt, and the sparkling citrus vinegar. Next week, we are going to be featuring the sparkling citrus vinegar, the lemon, and the Tuscan in some additional recipes. So what the beauty is, if you pick up a bundle, um, you're not just doing it for one show. You're going to be covered for quite a few shows. That is if you don't cook with it and use it all up between the, now and then, which is distinctly possible because it's great. And once it's in the kitchen, it's really rough to like hold on to it and wait for the next week to cook with it. But it's, um, hop onto our website, check it out. Also, if you have been every once in a while grabbing bundles or all of these are speaking to you, sounding interesting, you're really getting bored of the same cooking that you're doing over and over again. Um, go ahead and look at the bundles. And if they sound interesting to you, join the club. Let us know, hey, I've been watching your Instagram. She keeps telling me to join the club. I've decided to join the club. I get a discount on everything that I'm buying, all these bundles that I'm buying. These are considered my shipment, so I'm off the hook basically. And um, then I get recipe book, and then I get to be part of the family, free tastings, all of that jazz. So keep that in mind, all right? Uh, we will be welcoming Chef Sebastian soon. Uh, he is making a salmon roulette toast. It looks gorgeous. I'm super excited. It's warm still out here. It's almost nodding towards humid in here in Paso, which like never happens. So uh, this salmon is perfection for this time of year. I, I, the summer rolling into the fall, just gorgeous, a little bit of a, a snack. I would say this would be beautiful for a brunch, um, but uh, across the board, something fantastic to try to make at home. Uh, kind of fancy. And uh, we need a little bit of fancy in our lives right now, don't we? <laughs> I know I do. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, watch him work and see how he does it because it's something that I would love to incorporate in my house uh, because it is healthier and it is um, kind of a smaller snack. You could expand on it or keep it like that. Um, and uh, using some really great products. So I'll go into uh, the extra virgin olive oils and the items that he's gonna be using right now so that we can completely focus on Sebastian when he hops on. Uh, the Cucina extra virgin olive oil, that is, if you've ever tasted with us, this is our first extra virgin olive oil that you taste. I consider it the Chardonnay of our olive oil. It's smooth, it's buttery, it's super lovable. Um, I mean, this is, this is the kid that got along with everybody in school. Everybody loves Cucina. So uh, Cucina's one, if you are kind of on the fence on what to buy somebody as a gift, Cucina's a fantastic gift. I'm about to kind of add to that though. The other extra virgin olive oil he's using today, and I love that he's using two different types of extra virgin olive oils because they taste completely different. Uh, this is our Tuscan, 
And our Tuscan is also a fantastic gift. If you've got that foodie in your family, uh, this is one of those that will wow them. And it wowed judges. So uh, it got best in show, best in show at the LA International Olive Oil Competition. So the judges tasted it and said, this is the perfect representation of an excellent extra virgin olive oil. So once you taste it, you will totally get it. It has all the nuances that are uh, hoped for in an olive oil all in one. Uh, it is no shrinking violet. It is there to party. So um, it is one that's great for dipping. It's great for meats. It's great for grilling. A pastas, you've, you've seen it um, quite often on our cooking shows like today. So um, we'll talk to Chef Sebastian and ask why he chose these two. Um, to add to his his salmon today. The lemon, the lemon. So the lemon is our Meyer lemon uh, olive oil. So it is gorgeous. I have used this for baking, so for cook, uh, cakes and cookies and all of that stuff, as well as for salmon, for hummus, for uh, uh, artichokes, asparagus. I mean, you sa salads, I mean, Goes without saying, but this is a beautiful lemon olive oil. I've had people come in and say, well, my friend bought me a lemon olive oil and I like it. And I'm like, all right, I see you. Uh, uh, let's see if we can level up. And they taste this one and it's always kind of mind blowing. And they're like, oh man, this one's way better. <laughs> so come try it. It is fantastic. It works. Uh, they use it in smoothies. Uh, a couple weeks back, our recipes had this guy going into smoothies in the morning, so definitely worth checking out. Um, I honestly, has there been a recipe where we haven't involved these? Uh, this is that sparkling citrus. It's basically a mimosa in um, a mimosa in vinegar form. So it's sparkling white and oranges. It is gorgeous. Not only is it good in salads, it's really bright, it's really fresh. If you combine these two together and make a little salad dressing, it's fantastic. I always say it tastes like sunshine, probably tastes like. It's just happy. It's just a happy blend. Um, and people have been using this with sparkling water and vodka in a cocktail. I mean, it's been used in all different forms. So definitely one to keep on your counter because you're going to be using it a lot. And then that kosher salt. This one doesn't get as much love as it should. Um, remember, side note, uh, all of the labels are looking backwards and that's because it's Instagram Live. My hair is actually parted differently. So my part's on my left. I know it looks like it's on my right. I'm just, anyway, so <laughs> the kosher salt. Uh, the kosher salt is um, a salt that is used, if you do any uh, cooking, baking, this is the salt that is requested and called for in all the recipes. And it's because it's a cleaner flavored salt. It's um, not as harsh and it's a flake. So when you're picking up the flakes to um, do a pinch of salt, it's a lot easier to pick up than the little, little grind, little, little bitties. So this is a beautiful salt to just have on hand at all times. It's also good for rimming a Bloody Mary glass and a margarita glass and all that too, but that's a side note. Um, I do want to say as we are waiting for uh, Chef Sebastian that if there are chefs that are watching us, everybody who hops on, it, if you are interested in a collaboration, go ahead, DM us, let us know on Instagram. We would love to chat to you and see if we can work something out with you. So uh, we're always interested in um, interacting, getting some great recipes and ideas out there, and um, we'd love to chat to you. So if there are chefs out there watching, give us a holler, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I will say I just received the email for next week. Next week, it won't be me, so don't adjust your TVs. Uh, it's going to be our very own um, Noelle Scotty, and she is not only a tasting room associate for us, for Paso Levo, but also, she also um, develops recipes for us sometimes. So, uh, you've probably seen her on the other cooking show that we do uh, on our YouTube channel. I'm sh I know you've subscribed. I've already told you to subscribe, so I know you've subscribed to that, but, um, so you've seen her here on Instagram, um, on our feed, 
yeah, on our feed. Uh, you've seen her on our YouTube channel. You've seen her on Facebook. So she is um, going to be with you guys on the 25th at two, same time, same place. But she's going to be cooking for you. And the best part is it is quick and easy recipes. So this email just went out. So you'll be seeing um, the heads up on Instagram and Facebook soon about this as well. Um, let's see. You. Yay! Guess who I might have? Guess who I might have? Chef Sebastian, maybe. I don't know what I got. Hey! How's it going? Hey! We're seeing your belly. Hey! Amazing. You. Turn this around a little bit. <laughs> How you doing? Doing fantastic. I'm so excited to have you cook with us today. I don't want to say for us because I'm really bummed that that food cannot be in front of me right now. <laughs> Um, but um, I'm really excited to see to see you work your magic. Because, oh, thank you. Um, it, I mean, the it just sounds so fresh, so perfect for this weather right now. It's kind of a toasty, humid kind of time. I salmon is like my love language, so I'm all about salmon everything. And this sounds right up my alley. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how you've incorporated our products into your salmon. So. Before we get into that, I just want to kind of toot your horn a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you've been, I mean, you, your passion for cooking, this is going on a, almost a decade now. You mm -hmm. went to, you were in New York. Um, I wanted to shorten it and call it CIA. And then I realized, well, I don't want to say you were part of the CIA. I, I remember I used to explain it that way and everyone's like, what? I was like, okay, maybe I should elaborate <laughs> a little bit more on that. <laughs> Culinary Institute of America. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's why we're, I was calling it CIA for a hot second before I thought maybe I might get in trouble. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, you studied culinary arts and culinary arts management. So you are mm -hmm. kind of the full package. You have, you've got your focus on uh, recipe development and all of that, but you've also um, got that management part down, which is, for us right-brainers, a really hard thing to do because you're either oh, creative or not so like, you've, got the, you've got the structure or you've got the creative so you've got them both um yeah. you you've done line cook you've done sous chef you've done it all which is I, I mean anybody who's worked in that industry knows that's the type of person you want to work with because you've been through the gauntlet and come out the other side you you you've got you feel everybody's pain which is really oh, definitely to, to say the <laughs> least absolutely <laughs> I think, and, yeah, just the, the best thing about all that is, you know, all the people that I've gotten to, you know, share maybe too much time with and, and like really actually get to know all these people. So all the I experiences, just amazing. friends in the restaurant business and they, it's family because you, uh, yeah, you, you go through blood, sweat and tears with everybody. So I totally Definitely. get it. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So you've cooked in San Francisco. You've cooked in colorado you've cut you're now in san diego i mean mm -hmm. you i'm assuming there was a ton of cooking going on in new york so we're we're kind of i mean i'm kind of excited <laughs> i am too i'm i'm, well, super, I'm gonna reel super it in guys. i'm gonna pass it over to you um talk to us about what you're gonna dazzle us with today um, amazing well thank you for for the lovely introduction um i feel super grateful to be here and getting to showcase all these products um, when I received all these products, I, after tasting everything, I was just like blown away. I was like, honestly, with California, like these have to be some of my favorites, I think, after just tasting them and seeing how complex and different each product is. Um, so for me, of course, being as I moved back to San Diego, um, I wanted to do something super light, super summery. As you mentioned before, with the humidity, it's kind of unlike any summer I've ever felt here and I grew up here. So Right. Um, for me, I wanted to do something kind of light and fresh, and that would be something that's like, the recipe might look a little intimidating, but this is something you could do with leftover salmon that you grilled the night before. And really, the recipe is just kind of a guideline, and you could pump so much flavor into the salmon riette um, with pretty much anything that you like. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, just to talk, is uh, I'm going to show you this amazing salmon. I actually got this Santa Barbara salmon that is like, bonkers it's so beautiful super delicious God, it looks um good. yeah the a, color was insane i have a question about salmon there's there's freshwater salmon there's mm -hmm. ocean salmon there's different seasons of different salmons mm -hmm. uh, do you have a specific one that you uh gravitate towards 
I I sort of I, I'm normally just kind of will go to the market and see which looks the nicest. I don't always gravitate towards salmon um, just because I think it's one of those fish that nowadays it's kind of overused, you know, with with all the like improper farming techniques and things like that, where it's just so easy to get poorly raised salmon and things that kind of will contribute to negative aspects with, you know, with um, why am I drawing a blank here? with mother nature and like things that just aren't really giving back. So anytime I see something that's wild caught, anything that's local, ideally, I mean, as local as it can be for me in San Diego would be, you know, Santa Barbara um, or anything coming from Alaska. Um, but normally I just try to stay, stay with, you know, wild caught things that are fresh and whatever looks the nicest. Honestly, that's kind of my, my rule of thumb for choosing okay. salmon. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, pretty much, the idea with this recipe too is to not overly complicate it, kind of let the salmon and the olive oil shine as much as possible. Um, so the first thing I've done, I'll just kind of dive into it, is I've made, this is the cure. So it's gonna be, it's salt, sugar, zest of a lime, a lemon and a grapefruit. Um, and it's just equal parts salt and sugar. And what this is gonna do um, when we cure the salmon is it's gonna help retain some moisture and it's also seasoned salmon. So, uh, and I'm just going to pop this in here. So super simple. This cure, this is something you can make a really large batch of. And honestly, the longer it sits, the tastier it'll get. Because the salt and the sugar kind of pull out all the essential oils from uh, from the citrus zest and the dill. Which is really nice. So kind of just take it and just give it a good little shake and rub. Make sure it's like totally coated. Being as gentle with the fish as possible. And then... One thing that's super important when you're doing a cure is throw a timer on because if you leave it in the cure too long, it's going to be too salty. So you just want to be careful with that. So I'm going to pop that in the fridge for 30 minutes. I've got my timer on. And once that comes out of the fridge after 30 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to rinse it off under cool running water. And then, so in the recipe I have that I steam it. I just like steaming it because it's a really delicate way to cook the fish. It'll kind of just set the outside. I like to keep the inside somewhat medium rare, um, especially if it's good quality salmon, mm -hmm. just because that's how I like to eat the salmon as well. Um, so I, what I did was in the recipe, I have it steam it five to seven minutes. I did it right on the money with five minutes and I'm really happy with it. So this is my steamed salmon that you can see. And it's still, it's still pretty medium rare inside, as you can tell when I'm kind of squishing it. If, if you need to use a thermometer, I would cook it to about 120, 125, and then just let it cool completely afterwards. It's going to still flake out nicely for you um, when you go to make your salmon riette. Um, and you could do oven roasted. You could steam it. You could grill it if you want. I might add a nice little charred flavor. But the idea is to definitely let the fish rest and cool, and then you can kind of flake it apart to, to make your riette. So I'll start doing that now. And the first oil I'm going to use with this one is going to be the Tuscan olive oil, which maybe I'll let you kind of explain the beauties behind that a little bit too. Yeah, uh, well, I'm really intrigued because you do have two different extra virgin olive oils mm -hmm. that you're going to be using. And I'm excited to see why you chose the Tuscan for one thing and the Cucina for another. Uh, the Tuscan, I, like I mentioned before to, to everybody, this is like no shrinking violet. This is a bold, beautiful olive mm -hmm. oil. Uh, I think it showcases what we do best um, because we have 45 acres of planted olives here, uh, 12 different varieties that we grow. Uh, we taste, after harvest, we taste each one of them and then blend the each one that we feel like is going to create a perfect blend and with a nod to a specific kind of flavor profile the mm -hmm. tuscan is known to be a bigger bolder sometimes more peppery uh extra virgin olive oil for us uh, but with this guy it balanced out so beautifully it has that bitterness that you want in an olive oil it has the buttery it has that pepper but all mm -hmm. perfectly at the same volume all perfectly yeah. balanced so I'm, I'm interested to see how you're using them all. Yeah, so when I was, when I was reading um, all the descriptions and kind of all the uses behind it, is I think we had discussed initially about the, uh, the Oleo Novo, which is to me just like unfiltered, it's raw, it's peppery, it's super floral. Um, so I wanted to kind of get the closest, closest to that 
before the salmon riette. Um, so I chose the Tuscan for that purpose because I'm going to utilize it with just, just as raw, as a raw oil. So I want it to add a lot of flavor, a lot of peppery notes and some good body, some good fattiness to the salmon riette. Uh, and the cucina is a little bit further on in the recipe is what I'm going to be using to cook with. Um, and I know there are a lot of misconceptions about cooking with extra virgin olive oil. Um, you know that if you get it too hot, it'll release carcinogens and all these things. But I'm a firm believer and I grew up doing it because my mom always cooked with extra virgin olive oil. And I just it was kind of habitual for me. Um, so I think that if you cook with it the right way and you're delicate with it and things like that, that you'll impart a good flavor and also get the health benefits from it. So um, I, could, I could not have said it better myself. Yeah. <laughs> so please do. You mentioned that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the higher quality, the olive oil, the higher the smoke point. So ours has a smoke point of 425, which is super high. Um, but it's because we're small batch. It's because of how we take care of it on our end right. that it has that higher smoke point. It's, it, it's so low acidity that you mm -hmm. can cook with it really high and it's just fine so thank love you for doing that yeah of course thank you guys I, I love this stuff so i'm super excited so i just want to show you guys kind of the salmon um so you can tell it's still nice and kind of medium rare on the inside um which is totally great if it's good quality salmon if you're going to do this with something that's frozen or something that you buy in bulk i would definitely suggest cooking it all the way through and it'll still still be fine um so i have the salmon that i, I like to break it up into larger chunks just because you get like nice bigger bites of the salmon when you're eating it. It's just kind of personal preference. You can literally whip this into like a paste if you'd like, which is totally fine. So here I have some uh, smoked salmon that's going to be, that's just been chopped roughly. I'm going to add that as well. I'm going to add some creme fraiche here. This is just going to help bind it and also add a little tang to it, a little sour flavor, which is really nice with the riette. A little bit of mayonnaise, also just to add a little bit more fat and help bind it. Next is going to be its dill and chives that have just been sliced very thin. And I really like doing things like this because they hold well in the fridge. So you can kind of, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you want to just smear it on some toast, or if you come home from the bar and you just ha want to have a bite of food and you just take a spoonful of it, that also works, um, which I really enjoy. So next I'm adding some shallot here. That's just that, been... That really beats the pants off the rest of us that are going to the taco drive through um, Cause... So <laughs> I, envisioning you with a, a bowl of salmon while the rest of us are getting a bean and cheese burrito is, is definitely putting, <laughs> putting some reality. I'm, I'm very much so guilty of also treating myself to lovely Southern California Mexican food. So I'm right there with you. <laughs> so I've just started to mix this a little bit to bind it. You can tell it's kind of coming together. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, yeah, that? all the okay. are, are loving it and saying yum and hearts and loving it. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So I've got everything in there. I'm pretty happy with the texture now. So now I'm going to season it with recipes. I don't like to put exact amounts of salt because everybody has a preference. Um, so for this, obviously, there's already a lot of salt because you've cured the salmon. You've also incorporated some smoked salmon. So you kind of want to be careful with the seasoning and just kind of add little by little. It's always better to go little by little. If you follow a recipe, add all the salt, and it's too salty, you're kind of back to square one. So I always like to kind of just go little by little with that. So I'm not a small pinch of salt. I'm not a good splash of this olive oil because, like I said, I'm, I'm geeking out on the flavor, and it's just super delicious. So there's some of the olive oil there. I'm just going to go ahead and mix this. So, again, the more you mix it and the more you kind of, uh, like, push it around the more it's going to break apart so I like to be kind of gentle so I can still have these like mm -hmm. good larger pieces of salmon in there so I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice just to give us a little bit of fresh acidity in there that should do it give it a taste it's another thing I always just taste even if you're following a recipe tasting as you go is super important just to make sure you're happy with what you're doing I'm pretty happy with that it's delicious I'm going to go ahead and put this aside for a bit. Yeah, that Santa Barbara salmon is pretty amazing. Now olive oil, too, is just adding the, just the right amount of pepperiness to it. So I, I keep thinking it would be a fantastic brunch 
thing, you know, with like a poached egg or something like oh that. I don't gosh. know. Just definitely. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree 100% with that. It would be incredible. So the next thing I have here is uh, I just have a couple avocados that I've just scooped out and I forked them. And I just have them in a bowl here. So just for the sake of time, I wanted to be able to mix this and season it pretty quickly with you guys. So I'm just going to add, again, a little bit of the Tuscan blend to this just to utilize it because it's going to give me so much of that, like, peppery flavor. And I'm going to do a little bit of salt. It's pretty much like we're making guacamole, so I'm not going to do anything too, too, too fancy with it. Um, and a little bit of pepper. Again, we're already having a lot of the peppery flavor from the olive oil. So I'm just going to do a couple cracks of this. And then we're going to do some lemon juice as well in here. So that salt that you're using, is that that kosher flake salt? That, we that is the, co yes, that is the kosher awesome. flake salt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is amazing. I, I mean, there isn't a recipe that I follow that doesn't specifically call for kosher flake mm -hmm. salt versus any other random salt. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, so it's really good. It has to be a staple. Definitely. And in the restaurant world, like, I think, 90% of the kitchens that I've ever worked in, kosher salt is always the way to go. Just the way that it sticks to the food, the way that like as cooks and chefs, you grab it, you can feel it in your hands. Mm -hmm. If you start to use a finer salt, you kind of like seasoning gets a little bit more inconsistent and things like that. So a lot of times, yeah, the kosher salt is the way that a lot of chefs will go. So I have this season, just you can kind of adjust the acidity on this how you'd like. Again, there's gonna be some of the acidity already in the, in the salmon re-up. So you can kind of take, just go by taste and preference with that. All right, so I have my salmon riette. I have my fancy guacamole. So we're just going to put this aside just for a second. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just toast the bread. So I would suggest with this using a like heavy bottom saucepan or uh, saute pan, sorry. And I, just, I like to use cast iron. For me, cast iron is just always a good option because it retains the heat and they're pretty much indestructible. If you take good care of them, they'll last your whole life. So I have a slice of sourdough bread. Mm. I, like to go a little, I like to go a little bit thicker with it because it's going to allow you to toast the outside and it'll get nice and crispy. And then inside it will be soft and spongy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add the Puccino olive oil. Again, with this recipe, I just wanted to be able to try and incorporate as many of the products as possible in a way that you will get glimpses and notes of each oil, um, which, which I think we did with this one because it's, you know, we have one that's going to be used for seasoning, one for cooking, and then the lemon oil is going to be towards the end just to finish it and add a little bit of that bright Meyer lemon flavor that you, were that you were raving about before. <laughs> so I'm going to get this oil. You don't want it smoking. I just have it kind of shimmering. If you can kind of tell, just kind of glossy on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to add this toast to it. I'm starting to sizzle just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let that kind of kind of start taking off there a little. When I you're toasting, that, sorry, go ahead. I love that you're using the cucina for that because I always mm -hmm. uh, describe it as more buttery. So it mm -hmm. makes sense. That would be perfect for, because butter is going to smoke up really quick. So something like this is perfect. You get mm -hmm. that nice buttery quality without having, you know, issues with, you know, burning the place down. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. It's good. And uh, that's when you're toasting bread like this in a pan, I always like to kind of just apply some pressure and then kind of keep moving it. You always want to have enough oil that's just, just to cushion the bread from the, from the direct heat so that, the oil is going to help it kind of toast evenly and disperse the heat in an even way and constantly moving it. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie chef when he's making the grilled cheese sandwich and he's like constantly finding different hot spots on the flat top. Um, that is a fantastic movie. Anybody who's yeah. a TV, definitely <laughs> watch it. It's, it's a, it's a fun movie. So this bread's already soaked up a good amount of the oil. So I'm just going to add another little splash again, cause I'm going to be flipping this pretty soon here. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, beautiful. So yeah. just getting nice little toasty bread. I think it says a lot. You can judge a lot by someone's character, by how they toast their bread, I think. I think that's, a, that's <laughs> oh, an no. important trait. <laughs> Everybody run home and start practicing. It's, it's, always, it's always like uh, in, in a lot of the kitchens that I've worked, um, one of the first kind of tests for somebody being hired would be to make an omelet. So 
you bring somebody in and part of the interview process would be okay i want you to make me a, a french omelet um so there's just certain little details that i feel get neglected sometimes and it's like it's really fun for me to just focus on little things too like toasting a piece of bread and stuff so well, it's it's quality versus quantity and i think that yeah. our, our um our brand kind of speaks to that because mm -hmm. you taste some like the the tuscan for example makes you just want to run to the farmer's market get a good heirloom tomato yeah. and be like six dollars perfect i'll, I'll yeah. buy it and slice <laughs> it up and pour that olive oil on maybe a little kosher salt and just eat it that way because it it's it's quality. It's not quantity. <clears throat> You're looking at perfection like that. Like that piece of toast looks amazing. Thank Nobody, you. <laughs> I mean, we're all having. I'm gonna spend a week now trying to practice my toasting <laughs> skills. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to answer any other questions too. If anyone watching wants to reach out to me and anything like that with some of the techniques, because there's a few things uh, at the end of the recipe that I've kind of done, like for garnish, are gonna be a little bit different. All that's just like for. Aesthetic, so you can like really show off to your friends and kind of do all these things um that'll be fun so if anyone has any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me via instagram happy to help however i can <laughs> all right. as people start making this at home and then go oh crap what was he doing then <laughs> exactly do exactly so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna just let the toast cool slightly i just have it on my cutting board here um ideally you can serve it slightly warm it's not gonna hurt it'll just because I'm going to put the avocado down first and then the salmon red over the top. Um, but ideally, you don't want this to be like piping hot because everything will kind of just start to slide off of it. Someone so was, the start of the recipe. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, someone was asking about no, where to fine. get this stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to little little side note here um, that uh, pasolivo.com, you can hop on and just check out all of the different products. This is like a little section of all of the goodies that you can check out. Um, and if you ever are in Paso Robles, come to one of our tasting rooms, do a little bit of a tasting. You will fall in love. Our job is to ruin you for any other olive oil tasting out there. Um, and I think we're pretty good at it. So uh, we also like to confuse you. So if you walk in thinking you know what you want, I will give you 10 other products and make you realize you want all of them instead. So uh, that is, it, it's just a fun thing to do. If you guys are ever coming up to visit, doing some wine tasting, all of that, definitely swing by, do some tasting because this is a great little glimpse into our, our bits and pieces, but we've got so much more. So um, check out the website and then come visit us. We, yeah, we're masking up. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's all fine. <laughs> so we're just doing outside stuff now. All Amazing. Right. Back to your magic. Amazing. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm just adding some of the avocado and just smearing it, smearing it on the bread. Nothing, nothing too crazy about this. Just I you mean, can add the. Ready. Yeah, <laughs> it could be ready just like this too. Um, so I got just the avocado spread evenly on here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the salmon up and as this sits in the fridge. It'll start to like really bind together and becomes like a really nice spread, yeah. which is awesome. So like this on a bagel, like on a warm everything bagel, would just be like, that's all you need. I was going <laughs> to say that and I thought that's not classy. I can't bring up bagels right now. Oh, absolutely. You okay, can bring good. up bagels. <laughs> Support it. Yeah, dude. Some of this with like some sliced red onion and some capers. It's that's all you really need. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of the simple things I try to. Try to keep it as simple as possible while also utilizing, you know, everything I've learned along the way, the way that can kind of be um, translatable to people just cooking at home, too. Us laymans, yes. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. My, my girlfriend all the time, she was she was super scared to cook for me for, like, the first couple of years that we were dating. Oh, I can't even And then she finally realized that I'm just, like, like, if you make me, like, a turkey sandwich, I'm, like, the happiest person in the world because it's just the idea that someone's making me something. I'm, like, always just super happy. So here we have just the toast, avocados on the bottom, and then we have the salmon riad over, over the top of this right here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I have it on the cutting board. I'm going to cut it kind of at a sharp angle, not just, like, straight down. Again, this is just for aesthetic purposes. So cutting it. We have our plate here. 
while you're part. plating, somebody asks, mm -hmm. are there any other uh, fish that you could substitute for salmon in this situation? Absolutely. You could do any sort of white fish that you want. Um, honestly, you could do any, any fish that you feel confident eating, you know, raw or slightly undercooked. I would go that route. Like I wouldn't do this with, you know, if you're going to use cod or use um, like tilapia or something like that with this, you just make sure you cook the fish all the way through. That's like, that's just the most important thing. But this recipe and pretty much all these flavorings that are going together are pretty universal for, for anything that you want to do. Um, so I saved a little bit of the smoked salmon that I had that was sliced already, not, not the stuff that was chopped up. Again, this is just for garnishing to make things look pretty. So what I have here are, these are some radishes that I've just soaked. I sliced them thin and then soaked them in ice water. And what that does is it makes them kind of like cup up like a contact lens. Whoa. And, it like, and it like crisps them up a little bit and takes away a little bit of that flavor. And then just some shaved fennel. Everything's been soaked in ice water. And then these are uh, scallion curls. And the soak so. in ice water just crisps them all up? Yep, it crisps everything up. And then it also kind of removes any of that harsh, like, bitter flavor, especially if it's anything in the allium family, like onions and um, garlic, things like that. So, like, red onion, for example, anytime I use it raw, I always soak it in ice water for, like, 10 minutes. And it just takes out so much of that intensity from uh, from the rawness of it. Because if I eat, like, a raw red onion, I'm like, I feel like I'm, like, breathing fire all day long. So like for the <laughs> next day, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, uh, the ice water really helps a lot with that. So I'm going to take all of my uh, garnish here. I'm just going to take some of the radishes and then a little bit of the fennel. And I'm going to utilize this delicious vinegar, the sparkling vinegar, to season this. So I have, uh, I have the shaved vegetables in here. I'm going to do a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. And this is something that you want to do right at the last second because the salt, the vinegar, and the oil and everything will weigh this down and, like, they'll lose their crispiness. So you want to season this quick and throw it right on top as fast as, you know, as quickly as you can or as close as you can to serve it. Um, so I have a little bit of the Tuscan oil. I'm just going to season with. And then again... I wouldn't, I don't really have an exact amount for this. This is all just kind of preference on, on, on everyone's palate because everyone's going to like things a little bit differently. So I'm just going to add a few drops of this. I'm just going to toss it in here. And this stuff just smells amazing. I love this vinegar. It's, My first go. I mean, it's a favorite every, kind of like every other uh, recipe, whether it's a cocktail recipe or a cooking recipe, the all of our chefs are just gravitating towards it um i've always said it's great with sparkling water and vodka but I, <laughs> i'm i'm more the cocktail than the chef uh no, it i guess so uh but it works so well across the board and it's just I, again i think it's this weather this it just speaks to this weather it's so bright and happy mm -hmm. absolutely no i, I remember when we first got it i i took a like a big spoonful of it thinking that I was going to be like, Oh, it's super sharp, but it's got a lot of complexity to it, which I like. It's like really rounded out. So, and that's why I didn't choose to make a vinaigrette with it because I didn't want to dampen that acidity too much. Whereas if you have the olive oil, it's going to kind of counteract the acidity. So for me, by just doing a splash and then like a good splash of the vinegar, you get a little bit more of that vinegar flavor, which, which I really enjoy. What I love about, I mean, the, the seasonings we have, the, the vinegars we have, we try to stay as local as possible. So these vinegars are all made two towns over. It's this couple that has a two acre organic farm. They grow the stuff, anything that they can grow, they grow themselves. They do everything right there on their property. Uh, we did a little field trip over there and it was just gorgeous. Um, and they are so, so passionate cool. about what they do. They're award-winning in their own right. So it's fantastic to pair up with people like this because it's not only supporting uh, a, a small business, but also they are just so in love with what they do. Um, and you that's can so taste cool. it. Love that. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's to me what like coming back to California, I was just so excited about was just the bounty of, I mean, of all the produce we have here, of all the amazing products and, and just it being so worth paying a little bit of extra for a product that is made by, you know, like the people you just described and, and things like that, where you taste the, the work and the love that's gone into everything. And I think that's like so special. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I have all my vegetables on here. And then as another touch, I have a little bit 
of the fennel fronds from the fennel that came because I got a whole bulb of fennel. Um, so again, this is all just kind of garnish, garnish stuff to make, you know, to show off to your friends and make things look really pretty and add little subtle hints of flavor as well. Um, so I'm going to just add some of those little fennel fronds and the dill. And then I have a little bit of fennel pollen that I'm going to just sprinkle over the top as well. Fennel pollen is literally what it sounds like. It's the pollen from the fennel. Like if you're ever driving down the street and you see like the fennel growing up and it kind of looks like that and it's got all these yellow buds on the top, that's yeah. what's, uh, that's the fennel pollen. So we take that and you can, you can harvest them off and then you have to like strain them and dry it out and it, uh, turns into this which is kind of which is really nice oh that's crazy yeah and it's like a super floral kind of uh, fennel flavor you could also take fennel seed and grind it and just sprinkle that over the top as well this is going to give you a little bit more of like a floral fennel taste so and that's it right here oh gosh that looks gorgeous i love all the colors that you've brought in and it just looks so fresh i mean and to me that speaks california right there <laughs> Super fresh, super bright, and healthy. Oh, that is amazing. Everybody is, there are so many hearts floating around on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can see some of them. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. This is, I, I'm super excited to be doing this. And again, the, the products, I forgot, we got to finish it with the lemon oil, too. That's the, the finishing touch. Oh, nice. Just to add that little Meyer lemon flavor. Um, yeah, I'm just super grateful to get to use all this stuff. It's been, I think... At least one oil has been a part of every single meal that we've had since we got this stuff. So we're super, we're super jazzed on it. It's a little <laughs> addictive. I have, my friends hate me and love me for that very, they're like, why? I can't go back to store-bought now because it's yeah. way too good. What am I going to do? Like, I have to now be a complete convert and do everything through Paso Limo. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's a good thing. I mean, that, that shows how, how great of a job you guys do. And I mean, every, all the flavor and, the packaging and everything and obviously getting to work with you guys and stuff it, it just speaks speaks to how amazing all the products are so uh, i'm super grateful <laughs> your food looks like edible art and i absolutely agree it's <laughs> gorgeous it's kind of one of those things you definitely that's instagrammable for sure i would not <laughs> touch it i would not let anybody touch it until i took pictures of it so yeah uh, well, whichever you. restaurant you and bop around to they are lucky to have you and so are we i'm thrilled that you were able to take time out of your schedule to do this for us so thank you so much for that uh, thank um, you very much as i put out there i i know you've got a bunch of chef friends and anybody else who's watching who wants to collaborate with us we we love that we love these i mean everybody who's watching it we're all loving these type of recipes something new something different uh, something you're not going to find uh, every day uh, if you Pinterest a recipe. So it's yeah. really nice to have this sort of stuff. So anybody who wants to uh, connect up with us, DM us and we'll, we'll chat to you guys about it. So awesome. it was fantastic to have you. Any other questions out there before, before we let him go? No, <laughs> no, we're good. I'm just jealous because I just realized you also have that salmon in the fridge so you yeah you've got this back to back i mean yeah uh, yeah sure. i'm excited because this and honestly it starts to taste better like if you may i would suggest with this recipe like make the salmon riette like early in the morning and then and then like also just let it sit for a few hours in the fridge and the flavors really start to kind of melt together and like really come together yeah. um which oh, is I which bet. is super nice so and then you yeah. come back from the bars and eat it. Yeah, I mean- I, That too, exactly. exactly. And if you can <laughs> remember at that point to toast the bread, then it's good. You know? <laughs> don't, 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 nobody start fires at that point. Yeah. Let's skip the toasting part. We're good. Definitely. Good. Get the spoon. Uh, it, has, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Everybody's sending you tons of love. And um, we are going to, I'm gonna cover a little bit. I covered a little bit already about what's happening next week. Um, you are free to stick with us or tap out and sit and enjoy your fantastic meal that you just created. I will, I will uh, probably do that and I'll jump on and, and watch the rest of uh, what you got to say, definitely. The recipe is going to be on our Instagram, on our Facebook. So everybody who's looking at this and thinking, okay, I really want to, this doesn't look as scary as I thought it was going to be. Go ahead and hop on to our Facebook, our Instagram. Uh, subscribe to our youtube channel it's all right there for you that this and a ton of other recipes so uh put that out there for everybody 
because I know people want that in their mouths for right now. <laughs> um, and to, next week, this time next week, um, I'm handing it over to my coworker, Noelle, and she is going to be doing quick and easy recipes. So uh, the, the beauty is, it's a 30 minute show, guys, and she's got three recipes she's gonna be doing. Three, so that's how quick and easy this stuff is gonna be. So she's got a Paso Vivo ramen bowl, uh, a lemon bunt cake with lemon cream cheese frosting, and a Tuscan style white cheddar mac and cheese. So. I mean, those all sound amazing, right? Especially that mac and cheese, but that's, that's the way to everybody's heart, right? Uh, she's using some of the items that were from this bundle this week, and then she's adding some more stuff in there. So the bundle for next week will be the lemon olive oil. Hey, good to see you again. And she's also bringing in that sparkling citrus, of course and the Tuscan olive oil. So we've got those guys. She's also bringing in, this is the fun part, is when people are bringing in additional products that you haven't seen before. This is the artichoke lemon tapenade. It is gorgeous. I, again, could eat it with a spoon out of the jar, but uh, you can put it on toast, you can put it in pastas, uh, and I'm excited to see what she does with it next week. So grab that and try not to eat it between this week and next week or get two. There you go. Get two. And the nut crumbs. Guys, this is made here in California. The nut crumbs, um, gluten-free, paleo, all the things, all the things that, here, all the things. So not uh, vegan. Yeah. So this is the original flavor. We've also got, um, coconut curry, we've got spicy, we've got Italian. This is the original, so she's starting you off here, and then you can branch out. I'm not paleo, I'm not gluten-free, I'm not any of that. Uh, it seems like additional work. And I still love these. Um, I actually don't do panko anymore, I do this because I love the mouthfeel of it, I love the flavor, I think they toast up beautifully. Um, I put them in meatballs, I put them, um, if I bread fish, this is exactly where I'm going with it, so I'm, really thrilled that she's bringing the the nut crumbs in oh we made uh turkey meatballs and we brought in the nut crumbs you guys remember you were there so um yeah they're back um and also she's using the classic extra virgin olive oil so we have four extra virgin olive oils the tuscan the classic the puccina and the california this classic has a little bit more pepper to it so she's going to be bringing this in next week and one of my favorite salts of all times, the truffle salt. This salt can do no wrong. I put this on pretty much everything. Don't put it on your Cheerios, but you can put it on pretty much everything else. So uh, the truffle salt, definitely one, once you buy, you'll be like, why? Why was I living life without this? Um, oh yeah, popcorn, popcorn, okay? All of any of this, any of these guys, and this and popcorn. And then you don't have to cook it all. Cook, you should cook. But it's a nice little snack. And then the sriracha sea salt. The sriracha sea salt has a little bit of that kick, but not too much, just a little bit of that heat. It is gorgeous. I love this in guacamole. I love this to bring, to, to wake up any veggies that I've cooked. Um, I, um, I, I've put this on a ton of uh, scrambled eggs. It just, again, Bloody Marys, micheladas, also good, but definitely one that um, is a rarity to see out there, and I love that we have it. It works really well with our lime olive oil, too, if you have that in your house. This and that lime olive oil on avocado toast, like say that you make that, um, that avocado mixture that Chef Sebastian made today, putting this on there, nice heat to it. Um, so yeah, that is the bundle for next week. That's a lot of goodies that you're getting for next week, but you're also working on, no, three, three different recipes. And well, I'd say four because she's doing the bun cake and she's doing an icing to put on the bun cake. So that's four different recipes in 30 minutes and totally doable, quick and easy. That is the name of the game for next week. And that's the best part. So we're talking, 
I have to say college students, but I hear that a lot of them are getting kicked back out again, but my heart goes out to you college students, but college students, anybody who's at home and is like, listen, I'm in a small studio, a small apartment, or um, I'm traveling for work and I'm in a suite right now. I haven't got a ton of space, but I'm sick of eating out. This is the type of stuff that you can make um, and really wow someone and really wow yourself. So uh, if you've been on that, okay, I, I, I wanna watch the show, but I'm definitely not cooking things up because this is too fancy for me. This is your show next week. It is going to speak to you. It's gonna give you that added feeling of confidence and yes, you can do this. And then from there, you're gonna branch out and do a whole bunch of other good stuff. So I've talked enough. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we will see you next week. I will see you the week afterwards, but next week, Noelle will be there for you and she is going to uh, get you guys cooking. Okay. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. Join the club. Come visit us. Join us on YouTube and we'll talk to you later. Bye guys. <laughs>